you're looking. Nice day for healthcare. Danny, 220 on shop and a modest 80% on Tesla. Good work, man. Yep, continuation, guys. Tesla gives you the continuation. Ultimately, after another shaky ass start here, shop gives you the continuation. And guys, this is kind of just going to be the name of the game here for the next couple of weeks. While the market, we're going to talk about this a little bit more, but while the market, guys, is currently just kind of squeezing off here on the daily chart now, you know, we know a majority of names are going to continue to kind of just chop around back and forth. Makes sense as the index itself is doing very much the same. But as I continue to repeat and as you guys, you know, continue to prove, it doesn't mean we can't find momentum. You just got to know where to look. You know, so you look at Tesla, guys, kind of regardless of the market going sideways, you get the huge move here this week as we're breaking through all-time highs, basically just squeezing out all of those shorts there. So the shorts are taking some major pain. And, you know, that adds fuel to the fire is they're buying back all those short positions. And there's a couple of different names, guys. Just really pumping for the stars here. Same kind of scoop here for Shopify. You know, anybody calling for a top here, you know, looking to short this thing and, you know, basically looking for the rollover because they think it's extended or because, you know, they think, you know, the news is negative, et cetera, et cetera. You get the huge blowout move as you wipe out all of those shorts. So, um, you, everybody, absolutely. There we go. You good now? Beautiful. All right, so nonetheless, guys, the market can continue to chop back and forth, but we can still find a little bit of momentum. So the common trend, at least this week, is that you got a couple names that were coming into the week just near all-time highs, where again, guys, you probably got a lot of people calling for the top, you know, looking for these crazy-ass moves to finally come to an end here. And you can see what typically happens, right? Everyone's going short, calling for the top. And once we blow through that level, those shorts start covering in a quick fashion. So Shopify up another 6% here today, cracking through 1,000, hitting an all-time high. Tesla, obviously another big day here, guys, up another 3%, hitting another brand new all-time high. And then you got the Qs over here. Damn, they're getting ready to hit an all-time high as well. So we can continue, guys, to find momentum where the momentum lives. You know, a couple different names I'm noticing here today. You know, you got something like TTD, very similar to Shop, right? Very similar to Tesla. Already made an explosive move. You kind of start topping out a little bit. You get the shorts placed in their bets, and then you just blow through that level. So you got the combination of anybody trading the breakout, right? All the bulls coming in with the combination of all those shorts getting driven out of that position. So, you know, TTD guys, much like Tesla, much like Shopify, we want to identify names that are making strong moves and look for that continuation, right? So for a swing trader like me, as I'm doing these iron condors on the index, that gives me the patience to sit here, you know, and wait for something like Tesla. Well, we're setting up perfectly yesterday morning and then I'm doing my put spreads and then we're making our money. You know, gives us the flexibility, guys, for you swing traders and you day traders to nail something like shop. So we can continue to focus on these names that are breaking through highs, potentially scaring out some shorts, and that momentum can continue. But I do think, guys, the most important observation we gotta make right now is that the market itself is going into a squeeze here on the daily chart. And this is really, really significant. Reason being, it's inside these squeezes, guys, right? It's inside these total chop fests where your kind of, you know, average impatient trader is going to give back a lot of profits, right? We got no momentum to the upside. We got no momentum to the downside. And aside from those handful of names that are going against the overall trend, as a general statement, everything is just really sloppy. The beauty of these squeezes, though, guys, is that if you can be patient enough, right, what squeezes is eventually going to fire. Right, what's taking place inside that squeeze, all that energy, all that momentum getting built up, getting ready to release, man, once it finally releases, guys, you can get a week, two weeks, three weeks plus of beautiful, beautiful you know, momentum and beautiful direction 
towards the upside. Same thing to the downside. So keep that in mind. While it can be a little bit difficult, it can definitely be frustrating. You know, if you're trying to force the issue inside the chop, it's this chopping this guy's that ultimately is going to lead to those sweet market moves. It's so important to understand this, guys, because this is when we really want to start getting aggressive, right? Tesla's making a big move right now. Shopify's making a big move right now. You know, you got your handful of names taken off. But when the whole market is breaking out and releasing energy like that, basically everything as a general statement is kind of going up with it. So keep that in mind, guys. Inside this chop here, it's going to be a little bit ugly across the board. But the longer that we chop for, the longer we stay inside a daily squeeze, the longer things tighten up. Once we finally release that energy, these are the kind of market environments we can be gifted with. So stay alive inside the chop and just understand the good times are coming. If we continue to chop and squeeze, eventually energy is getting released. And like we always do, guys, we can eat like kings when we get that big momentum. Until then, you got to find the strength where it is or you got to be taking the easy money, guys. So if we take a look at the squeeze, we continue to squeeze, right? Once we're in the squeeze, guys, we just continue to chop. We continue to do absolutely nothing until we get momentum either which direction, right? You can see the most recent example. If you look at the TTM indicator, it's nothing, nothing, nothing. And then we finally get momentum to the upside, right? And that rally lasts until the momentum dies out. So if we look at the market right now, it makes sense that we've got no momentum and we can see that on a TTM indicator, right? The red bars will tell us that we got bearish momentum. The light blue bars will tell us that we got bullish momentum. Right now, we don't have either. So with the iron condors, right, these trades I've been doing here, guys, on the SPX, call credit spreads, put credit spreads, just shorten premiums out the money. These trades are easy money and they continue to be easy money as long as we don't have momentum. So the TTM squeeze indicator is, you know, something I'm actually going to start to rely on a little bit more as far as giving me a gauge of, you know, how much longer can these iron condors work? Because it is awesome, guys, right? The market's chopping back and forth, you know, and this is kind of how I look at the market. I throw my five-minute chart up of the SPX, and if I can't see that orange line where I shorted calls, and I can't see that orange line where I shorted puts, I'm in good shape, right? These trades are easy. Easy money's coming in until that momentum comes in, right? These iron condors, guys, we're just short and premiums on both sides. They're awesome. They're easy until we get momentum. So if you go look again at that daily squeeze, right? These, you know, option selling strategies where you're just collecting premiums on both sides, they work, they work, they work. But once the momentum comes in, guys, those strategies, they, they quickly stop working. So just like we got to adjust when we lose momentum, right? Because all of a sudden slinging calls and just swinging everything on earth isn't working. We got to treat the chop the same way, right? So what I'm doing, guys, is just taking those easy paychecks, short and deep out the money calls, short and deep out the money puts, and that will continue to work until momentum comes into the market. And we can see that there on the TTM indicator. So what I'm going to do is you know, continue to wait for things like Tesla. You know, identify things like TDD, like shop, where the strength is going. And I'm going to keep on milking these iron condors on the SPX until some sort of momentum, whether it be bullish, whether it be bearish, comes into the index. But until then, guys, until we get momentum, it's going to be more of the same crap. So... Those are my thoughts on the market itself. As far as my open positions, y'all, I got close to a couple condors today. I got one more for Monday's expiration, 3,200 to the call side, 2,970 to the put side. And again, you know, I'll throw up my five minute chart here. And if I can't see either level, then I got nothing to worry about. Most likely guys will be looking to take this one off tomorrow. Just based on theta, if we open up relatively flat, We'll have enough premium coming in for me. I'll take profits and then go into cash over the weekend. I did close my position in Tesla. And I mean, it doesn't get much easier than this one. When they work, guys, they're pretty damn sweet. So 
right at the open yesterday. I was short and puts down there at 940. Obviously, yesterday was a big day. Obviously, we got the continuation today, guys. So I got that trade closed, got the profits, and now we wait for the next one. So if we go look across the board here, guys, XLK, the tech sector, up a little bit over half a percent. Not strong, not weak, just kind of choppy here today. The financial sector is down almost 1%. Right, again, guys, just doing nothing, chopping back and forth. The energy sector is down 2%, but right, we go look over here. It's just a bunch of BS noise. The industrials were green earlier as Boeing was rocketing. Now they're red. It's just a bunch of noise, guys. So literally outside of these handful of names, the Shopify's, the Spots, the Coops, the Teslas, etc. Majority of the crap that we look at is doing a whole bunch of nothing but chopping right now. The transport's all over the place. Healthcare. Just some choppy crap here, guys. So those are my thoughts on the market at the moment. Ideally, I'll come in here tomorrow, guys, and take, you know, whatever kind of profit I got from the iron condor off the table. And then I can go into the long weekend all cash and then see what next week brings us. But that's really my advice. If you want to, you know, survive and kind of move the ball forward in this market, you can do those easy trades, right? Just taking that low-hanging fruit with something like an iron condor as long as we don't have momentum in the market. As soon as that momentum comes in, you got to get rid of those condors and change it up. So that's going to continue, guys, to be nice paychecks until the momentum comes in. And then we got to quickly adjust. So I'm going to continue to do those. And in the meantime, right, you know, things like Tesla, things reaching their highs with high short interest, breaking out big time. So Tesla, really good move there this week, guys. Congrats to all of y'all who hit that. I do like TTD here. It's kind of the same concept, breaking through all time highs, shaking out all the shorts. And then you obviously got Shopify over here just going freaking crazy. So that's my thoughts on the market, guys. As long as we're squeezing, as long as there's no momentum to the upside or to the downside, I'm going to continue to milk these iron condors basically for what they're worth. In the past, where I've gotten myself into trouble with those condors is, again, they work until they don't work. Looking at it a little bit differently now, guys, they work until momentum hits the market. Then you've got to get the hell out of them and switch it up. So... I'm going to continue to milk those. I got the one open up here at 3,200 down there at 2,970. And that's about it for me, guys. The one last thing I want to talk to y'all about, we talked about this twice this week, but I think if we just go over it real quick, it'll be a good lesson for you guys. All right, so let's see. Where is yesterday morning? Today's the 1st, so we need the 30th. Here we go. Yesterday morning. Perfect. All right. So yesterday, guys, you take a look at shop. Let's get rid of that and let's push the chart back. But I'll make this really quick, but important lesson for you guys. All right, guys. So coming into yesterday morning, right? You got a shop here, and we're set to open up, you know, right next to this, you know, 926, 927 breakout level. Everyone's been looking at shop. Everyone's been trading shop. So you come into the market, guys, right, in some of these setups, everybody's looking at the same shit, right? Everybody is looking for this breakout in the shop yesterday morning. Now, we look at the chart in hindsight, and wow, what a move. What a clean breakout. You could have made some sweet money. But what tends to happen, guys, is that those breakouts are never going to be as smooth as they might look in hindsight, right? Sure, you buy some calls, you hold on all day, and you're making a killing. But you guys will remember yesterday morning that right at the gate, right out the gate at the open, they quickly push shop right above the breakout level. All right, so you got all these new traders just sitting there drooling, ready to take that breakout. So it starts to run away, right? It's looking like it's going to break out. And a lot of times, guys, not always, but very often, that breakout immediately fails, right? It fades all the way back, right under resistance, right back under the breakout point. 
basically just, you know, kicking anybody who jumped into those calls right in the teeth. And then to make matters worse, what typically happens as well is the next day, right? That day, a couple hours later, we make the move. So take a look at this, guys, right? Just to give you perspective. If you came into yesterday morning's session, right? And on that pump there, you're waiting for this breakout. You're all antsy and boom, there it is. You know, if you come jumping into 950 calls, let's take a look at those calls. If we go to shop, look at this week's expirations, 950s. Right, and this is what makes this so messed up. All right, let's get one more chart up. Uh, flexible grid. All right, so let's check this out, guys, and let's get a five minute chart. Let's go find yesterday morning's open. That's today's open. Let's see. We need yesterday. 6.30. There we go. All right. So there's yesterday morning, guys, right? And now let's get shop up here. And let's also look at yesterday morning on a five-minute chart. And we're looking at that right there. All right. Here we go. So again, guys, right, everyone coming into this session, like with a lot of breakout trades, if it's a name that's been strong, right, if it's a name that a lot of people are, you know, quote unquote, making easy money on, you got to understand that everybody and their mama is coming into this session looking at the same exact level. So what often happens, guys, is that the market makers know you're looking for that breakout, right? They know yesterday morning you've got a couple hundred thousand kids sitting there just looking to take that breakout in shock. What tends to happen, guys, is that they'll give you that initial head fake, right? They'll give you that sense that that stock's breaking out, and then they rope you into those options, right? So check this out, guys, right? Yesterday morning, right? Let's uh, see today's date is the first, right? So yesterday morning, guys, shop opens up, immediately begins to spike above the breakout level, and then immediately comes all the way back in, right, and drops right back underneath the breakout level. So they gave everybody the move that they're looking for, they roped you in, and then they pull the rug out from underneath you and they dump it all the way back beneath the breakout level. So check this out, guys. Yesterday morning, on that opening drive, right, on that opening move for a shop, on the same breakout that everybody's looking for, if you're jumping into those calls, right, the 950 strikes, Let's just say you're getting in here right at the open and you're paying 14 bucks. The market makers know the move you're looking for. They're going to give you the head fake, making it look like that move's happening. They rope you into buying those calls for a good 13, 14 bucks. And then they pull the rug out from underneath you, right? They drive it all the way back down to your breakout level. And what happens to those calls? They go from 13 bucks down to five. So think about what tends to happen here, guys. They give you the, you know, they rope you in. They give you the move you're looking for. The market makers are selling you those calls for 14 bucks. Then they pull the rug out from underneath you. The stock gets slammed right back down. You jumped into those calls for 14. Now, a couple minutes later, they're going for five. Your average trader is not going to hold on to that. They can't stomach the pain then they get rid of those calls. Guess who's buying them back, right? The same market maker who sold them to you. So they're gonna sell it to you for 14, drive the stock back down, shake you out, and buy it back at five bucks. So they've already made their money selling it to you for 14 and buying it back for five. And now think about it, right? They're getting all those calls back from you at five, and what tends to happen? Once they're done wiping out all the amateur traders, then the move can continue. They rope you in at 14 because everybody wants that breakout. They then dump the move back down. They're shaking you out at five bucks. So they're buying them back at five. And look where these things are today. 60. They know the breakout you're looking for. They rope your silly ass in. 
Then they buy the calls back when you have basically an 80% discount. And then the move continues after they've wiped you cleaned. And those options go 5 to 60. They make their 10x. They make out like absolute bandits. And remember, they made money off the rip, selling those calls to you for 14 and buying them back for 5 bucks. So with that understanding of some of the games that can be played, guys, with the market makers, you got to look at breakouts a little bit carefully. you got to understand why a breakout probably has a good chance at failing initially and then turn in the corner and run them for the hills. Hopefully that makes sense, guys, but that tends to be what can happen with those breakouts. Everybody's looking for the same move. The market makers know exactly what you're coming into the session looking for on that given setup. They're going to lure you in, then they're going to wipe you out, and then the move continues. And they're making a killing on both sides of the game. So that's what happened yesterday morning in shop, and then she just continues to explode. So a good lesson there for you guys. But family, those are my thoughts on the market. We'll take some questions now, and then we'll see what tomorrow brings. Yeah, just basically playing on the theta, man, right? You know, because ideally, you know, we don't really want any direction. You know, to the extent we start pumping towards the upside, you know, now those calls that you shorted are starting to gain some value, right? Which kind of messes things up. You start pumping to the downside, you know, now those puts you short that are gaining value. So, you know, ultimately, as long as you close within your range, you're going to collect your max profit, but it comes quickest and easiest when we literally just kind of do nothing but go up a little bit, down a little bit. So you're basically just playing for that theta, right? Like in the example of these ones that I sold for Monday's expiration, you know, they're going to lose about 20, 30% of their premium just based on theta every day. So if we can have anything other than a big directional move, a lot of your premiums coming in, you know, just kind of based on how the function of those options work. And then Mr. Seth Boeing here, let's take a look, guys. So all over the place this week, but here's one observation I made earlier. You know, just kind of chilling out, guys, that it's 21 EMA. You know, we got to remember that's just typically what a stock is going to do. You're doing one of three things. You're moving away from the 21. Right? You're moving back to the 21. Or you're hanging out at the 21, getting ready for your next move away from it. So really, guys, kind of putting aside all the craziness for this thing this week, that's kind of what it looks like here. Right? You get the big gap up. Obviously, they're buying it like crazy at the 21. Right? And you get the ugliness after hours into them open. You know, but they're coming in and buying it again. You know, and big spike today, dropping hard again. But at least at the moment, you know, they're buying it up again. So... It just does kind of look like, guys, a stock getting ready for that next directional move. You know, the more time we kind of spend banging back and forth on the 21, kind of just getting its breath ready for the move away, right? And then it makes the move away, and at some point, you know, we kind of make the move back home. You chill around the 21, getting ready for the move away, right? You make your move away, come on back home. So that's kind of how I'm looking at this one right now. And if we just look at, you know, kind of some basic levels here, really, you know, you got your support down there, call it 167.50-ish. You got, you know, a little different resistance. Right? I mean, that's kind of just guys on a big picture, how I would look at it. And we're banging around the mean, and, you know, we're just kind of getting ready for that next move, whether that be a big breakdown, you know, below support whether we can finally kind of clear out of this range here. What I would do as it's hanging around that 21 is start looking for some squeezes, right? If we can find squeezes on any given time frames, makes it a little bit easier to kind of catch that next move. So daily chart, we got nothing. The four hour chart, we got nothing. Yeah, kind of an ugly hourly. And then nothing there on the 30 minute. So those are my thoughts on Boeing, man. You know, we're just kind of hanging around the midpoint right now, basically getting ready for that next move. You know, obviously what makes Boeing potentially a little bit tricky 
is it's you know one of those headline driven stocks you know guys so obviously we can see the reaction to any positive news can be pretty freaking crazy at the same time we can see how quickly it can give it up on you know anything other than positive news so you gotta know what you're trading right this is a stock that over the last three days went up you know 12 13 percent in a single session and then just kind of gave it all back guys in a couple of days here so given the headlines and everything going on with Boeing as a company testing of the flights etc just got to take that into consideration and its average move at the moment is about 13 bucks so that's a pretty good size move those are my thoughts guys on big Boeing any other names you guys want to take a look at any other questions that y'all got you see Tesla nice and steady here today and at this point guys not really interested in Tesla until we can get some sort of little dip a little bit of a pullback right I mean Shopify crazy crazy TTD see if you get continuation there tomorrow yeah Baba so Baba here guys you know underneath the 21 but you're working with a handful of different squeezes right here all right so if we pull up our four hour chart right, nothing on the four hour we go to our hourly all right we got a beautiful hourly squeeze right here and it's been squeezing for right, a couple of days now guys so really just getting super tight coiling up building up energy and then the same thing here on the 30 minute chart you know so if we look at the 30 minute you know those bars turned in blue you know we're starting to see some kind of bullish momentum coming in you know the squeeze hasn't fired yet but the indicator can be useful guys all right now don't quote me on the specifics of it but what those light uh, bl 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 what those light blue bars represent you know, what that means is that I believe over the last four or five bars the majority of the price action taking place is buying all right it might be the last six bars the last eight bars but nonetheless that's what the light blue really tells us that hey while we're inside the squeeze they're doing more buying than selling right now so in other words there's bullish accumulation taking place inside of the consolidation and typically guys you know if we just go find uh you know some example here like shop obviously a very short-lived 30 minute squeeze but what those light blue bars are telling us is that you know over the last four five six bars even though we're going sideways they're doing more accumulation than they're doing selling so if we look at Baba one more time here guys on the 30 minute chart and you can see that they're doing a bit more buying than selling you know if they start buying it enough and then the 30 minute squeezes to the upside you know then you kind of look for a bigger move here is that could lead to the hourly squeeze firing to the upside the one thing I do note is that we're underneath that 21 right and what I like about that guys is that maybe we come home here right we roll under the 21 but you know at some point we're gonna come home right we're under the 21 at some point we're coming home you're coming back home right? you're coming back home you always come back home right at some point you get your reversion to the mean so what I would actually do here is we got all those squeezes right and then you got the 21 EMA right here at, let's call it call it 218 right so what I would do is right mark that 218 level you know now we go look at those squeezes again right let's go back to that hourly squeeze You know so we got a nice squeeze here and we're right underneath that 21 you know so you got the potential here that this squeeze fires to the upside and bare minimum just kind of launches forward and gives you that healthy reversion to the mean pulling back towards the 21 you know we're trading at about 216.50 that's up there at 217.80 you know so that's only about a dollar or so and if you look at the average true range for Baba right now whoops 
we look at the average true range, it is $5.50. So I actually like that idea. Right? We're building up energy. You know, we got a potential magnet hanging above our heads at that 21 EMA. And if we make just a quarter of our average day's worth of price action, we can easily get to that level, right? The average move at the moment is, you know, five bucks. You know, that brings you towards 221. For this squeeze to fire and run towards that magnet of the 21 EMA, wouldn't be asking all that much of it. So something to keep an eye on there. Right, you know, maybe potentially, you know, you see something like this where, you know, you start kind of going sideways underneath the 21, you know, and like a magnet, you kind of come on back up. Something to keep an eye on. What do we got here, guys? Another 20 minutes or so left. So who's hot and who's not? Apple, guys, is pretty damn quiet here, having a tough time at this, uh, you know, 368 level. So kind of a quiet day there. Amazon. What the hell? So clearly I missed some news in Amazon up 4.5%, 5%. Yo, so this actually gives today's market a different perspective, right? Amazon, guys, is very heavily weighted, specifically in the queues, but it's a good piece of the spy as well. So you got Amazon up 5%. That's a huge reason as to why QQQs are up one and a half percent. You know, so when we're looking at these indexes, guys, it's important to try to get a sense of, you know, is everything in this index strong or is one of the major uh, weightings having a big day? So apparently Amazon's having a big day here. That makes a lot of sense as to why the Qs are up one and a half percent. Right. The spies up one percent, because if we look at tech from a general statement, Apple is flat. Yeah, he actually got some strength here in Google. He actually got some big strength there in Facebook. So I stand corrected, guys. We actually got Netflix is up 6%. I feel like I missed something here today. But there you go, family, right? What's big money buying? Looks like they're buying the FANG stocks here. NVIDIA kind of quiet today, right? LRCX kind of quiet, AMD a little bit sloppy, so there you have it, family. If we're looking to follow the money, it's those tech names, Facebook up 5%, right? We took off that call spread for a 30% loss. If we held on to that, no doubt would have been a 100% loss. Google's up 2, Amazon's up almost 5 there you have it, family. You're looking for strength. This is where to focus for now, right? These FANG stocks are getting some major love today. So the name of the game is continuation. They're buying the crap out of Netflix, Facebook, Google, Amazon today. If they continue, what you want to do this evening, guys, is put together a game plan of how can you trade that continuation, right? If money's going to come over here into these tech names, put together a game plan for how you're going to trade that continuation, right? So... If they keep buying tech for the next two, three, four days, obviously, guys, Apple's going to move higher. So with that being said, you know, you start putting together a game plan. You start identifying some resistance levels. You start looking for some squeezes. Whatever your given trading style is, whatever given setups you like, we want to be doing those setups and those strategies where the big money is going. So I would say for tomorrow, guys, and heading into next week, we want to focus on these FANG stocks, making a hell of a move here today. Really, really interesting to see if that continues. But that's it for me today, guys. I hope you have a good evening. Rest up. I'll post a recording of this in the chat room and on the site later tonight. And I'll talk to you guys in the morning. Good work today, guys.